Welcome you all to Understanding Multi-Account Management. This is Bhuvaneshri Subramani here. By the end of the session, you will have an understanding of how AWS organization and service control policy can help you to manage multiple accounts economically and efficiently. So here's the agenda. You will first learn evolution of AWS adoption and then why you need multi-accounts. You will learn how to set up and use AWS organization and service control policies, followed by a sample multi-account strategy and the best practice while using the multiple accounts. Evolution of AWS adaption. In the journey to cloud, the companies would have felt the need for more than one AWS account as part of their growth. And it could be either of the following ways. Some companies would move to AWS account incrementally or organically with individual divisions and teams making a move to cloud computing on a decentralized basis. Some companies would start adapting as part of mergers and acquisition, taking responsibility of the existing AWS accounts. And some would routinely go for additional AWS account as a security best practice to follow compliance and some would even go further to have a clear isolation barrier between the applications or even to have a dedicated account per environment. So you need multi-account for the following reasons, for cost optimization and consolidated building. An enterprise having multiple account would want it to make a payment, do cost analysis from the central place rather than at the individual account level. So you wanted to limit the blast radius in case of unauthorized access, be cognizant about the security exposures, and resource grouping is going to help you with categorization and discovery. By defining AWS accounts per business units, you can define the users who can access to the specific accounts or the environments. In a layman terms, if team A cannot take care of team B's application issues when paged at 2 a.m., then probably these two applications cannot be hosted in the same AWS account. So what is AWS organizations when we are talking about multiple accounts? AWS organization is to simplify the management of multiple AWS accounts. So when you create an AWS organization, you can create either all features or consolidated billing features. So the recommended one is all features by AWS. So there are certain key features of AWS organizations. AWS recommends creating multi-account as a security and compliance best practice. So when you say control access and permissions, AWS organizations works very well with AWS single sign-on, wherein you can centrally deploy the access credentials for all of your employees in an organization. Further, AWS can help to audit, monitor, and secure your environment for compliances. As an example, you can turn on CloudTrail logging at the central account level and turn it off at the individual account level so that things are centrally logged. And with AWS organization, you can further go ahead and create critical resources in one account and share it across all AWS accounts in an organization. And centrally managing cost and consolidated building, it helps you for better cost optimization and greater volume discounts. How do you create AWS organizations? Here are five steps. The first one, you would go ahead and create an AWS organization. That account is called the management account. To that, you can attach several other accounts which are member or linked accounts. So once you have the organization created, you can have only one AWS organization. And after this organization, you would go ahead and create AWS organization units and this organization unit is going to be the logical grouping of your AWS accounts for you to administer them as a single entity. 
So with this organization unit, you would go ahead and create AWS account under this or you would invite the existing AWS account to be member of this organization unit. So once you have the accounts created or invited to be part of it, you would go ahead and create service control policies and apply to the accounts or the organizational units, which would either allow or deny certain service access. Finally, go ahead and test the restrictions so that you're set. So now when you have the management account and linked or member accounts, how would the management account take access or control over the member accounts? That's by means of organizational account access role. So this role gets created by default in the member account when you create within the organizations or when you invite it. Another thing you wanted to remember is, so when you create an AWS account within an organization, by default, this will not have a root access. You'll have to go ahead and request for the root access to that account. Also, remember that the management account cannot be changed once created. Let's see the components of organization. So when you create an AWS organization, imagine like a tree which is held upside down with a root at the top and the branches coming down as an organizational unit ending with the leaves which are your AWS accounts. So when you apply any policies at the any level of the tree, it comes down, flows down and gets applied till the end or that is the leaves. So the service control policy or the policy that you create, you would apply at any level. And an account can be associated with only one AWS organization. Further, to form a hierarchy, you can have five levels of organizational unit. These are some of the key things that you can remember. And let's see how the service control policy can be used. A service control policy helps you to define what services and actions are allowed for the users or the groups in the specific AWS accounts with this service control policy effects. So when you create the service control policy, you create at the management account level and you apply at the individual account level or the organization unit level. It has no impact on the management account, but it has impact only on the linked account. So the IAM helps you to grant permission, but however, the service control policy is here to allow or deny certain access. It is not granting permission. The some examples that I wanted to quote, the first one, when you enable cloud trial at the management account level, so you would disable at the individual account level using service control policies so that all the cloud trails, that is each API calls in either a management account or the individual member account is logged only at the management account level. The second example, you would create a database account and you would want to have this database account as a member of the management account. Once you create the service control policy that I have only RDS allowed in this account, then despite your IAM user is gonna have root user account or administrative permissions or any special privileges, this IAM user or the role will not be able to access any of the services other than the RDS because that's what only allowed as part of your service control policy. So in a nutshell, what a an user can do here is the intersection of service control policies and the IAM. Both should allow or grant for certain things to work. If S3 is allowed, by service control policy and it has permissions in IAM, then only the user can access it. Okay, so this is key as part of your AWS organization's management. We'll look at a sample multi-account strategy with account structure, consolidated billing, a network architecture, how would you enable central logging and how the IAM works. Here is the sample architecture with a management account which is called the root organizational unit and has three different organizational units having security and auditing account, 
and shared services account and also the application account. See the application account can be further subdivided into different accounts per environment. Could be dev, test and prod. So for these accounts, you can go ahead and create service control policy and apply it at either the management level or the individual organizational unit level or even to the account level. So with this, how would you take care of consolidated billing? So we spoke that in a large enterprise, we wanted to make a bill payment or do cost optimization or analysis only at the central level. So with the consolidated billing feature turned on or even the all feature set turned on, you will be able to do this. So this green line flowing from all the accounts fetches all the billing information and have it in the central place of the management account. From there, you can make a payment, do a cost analysis and do generate reports, all that is required. Next one, getting here, we will see how do you centrally log or share resources between accounts. See the follow along the yellow line to see the log information that is getting captured in the security and auditing account. So you would want to capture your VPC flow logs, CloudTrail logs, DNS flow logs, or even your application logs. All that you wanted to put in central uh, security and auditing account, you want to put it in a single S3 bucket or multiple S3 bucket and you wanted to share it with your auditing team for further analysis. And if you wanted to share resources between accounts, you would go ahead and create cross account roles. And also for sharing the VPC resources, you will establish the VPC peering connection between different accounts. You would see this blue line indicating the peering between the VPCs and different AWS accounts. So, now, the shared services account can be used to deploy the critical services or the shared services. It could be your CI CD services or the Active Directory for authentication. All that can be deployed in the shared services account, which can be used by different accounts. Now, how do you share resources from your AWS account to the corporate data center? So for that, you can do it with two means. One is establishing the VPC connection between the AWS account and the corporate data center. The second one, you would want it to have a direct and dedicated connection from the corporate data center to AWS, which you can have either one MBBS or 10 MBBS dedicated line. So now with this, you have IAM everywhere. The red line indicates IAM is all over. It's going to take care of the security for you. So now we will look into the best practices. Use group aliases rather than individual email address as the account email addresses. Employees may come and go. So best to use group email addresses. So create and implement AWS tagging standards across AWS accounts. Also, you can have restrictions to the level of denying the resource creation if there is no proper tagging standards followed while creating the resources. And you should leverage compliance monitoring scripts to monitor AWS accounts. And the best practice is to enable and enforce multi-factor authentication for root and IAM users. Also, choose the multi-account strategies suitable for your business. It could be for individual business units or it could be for separate applications, or it could be for dedicated environments. And for more details, I would recommend reading user guide for AWS organizations. Let's use AWS organizations and service control policies for cost optimization, consolidated billing, to enable central logging, and to further share resources efficiently across accounts or with corporate data center. Thank you so much for all your time.